What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to model an A-frame house or an A-frame uh, cabin in Revit. So I saw this image online and I thought it looks really really amazing, really cool. It's sort of a, a cabin in the woods and it's on some uh, steep terrain and it has an A-frame construction that basically means that you know the majority of the building is the actual roof so it's pretty much all a roof and I, I thought it's a really cool thing to try to model in Revit and that's what this tutorial is going to be all about. Uh, now if you're interested in Revit roofs I actually created a complete Revit roof masterclass uh, where I have like seven hours of content where I just go in depth and explain all of the tools for creating R Revit roofs or all of the different types of roofs that you can create in Revit. And then finally, I have uh, some projects where I actually show you how to combine those different roof types in order to create some really, uh, really cool complex roofs in Revit and how to assemble everything together, how to cover the construction. And even at the end, I show how to create a Spanish tile roof, a 3D Spanish tile roof uh, on top of that. So if you're interested in that, that's going to be the first link just below the video in the description and check it out if you're interested in something like that. And also, if you would like to get access to all of my Revit project files like this cabin that we're creating today, this A-frame house, uh, that's available on my Patreon. That's going to be the second link in the description. So check it out if you're interested. Also, make sure to subscribe, like and share this video. It really helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. It helps promote the video to other people that may be interested in this. Uh, so that's really nice. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into the video. And here we are in Revit. So let's immediately get started by going here into models and then going to new. Now for the template file, I'm going to choose my personal Balkan Arctic template, the metric version. Uh, if you're interested in this template, either the metric or the Imperial version, you can find both on my website, BalkanArctic.com. The link to the templates is going to be the third one in the description. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's just click OK and let's start Revit up. So as soon as Revit starts up, for creating this type of a uh, roof, uh, what we need to do is uh, we need to have some sort of a vertical uh, host for our roof. Uh, because here for the roof, we're going to be modeling this as a roof by extrusion. That's just what I prefer for these uh, A-frame houses. So I'm just going to go here and place a grid. So let's go here to the grid tool and then let's place one grid just like that. So once we have this grid in place, uh, now we can simply go to one of the elevations or uh, actually I want to go to the south elevation so I can look at this head on. You can also use the north elevation if you want, but I just prefer the, the south one. Okay, there we go. So we have our level one, we have our level two here. So let's use that to get started. So I'm just going to go here to the roof tool, expand that in order to find the roof by extrusion. And then once we have that uh, here, uh, let's specify the work plane. So as I said, we need a vertical work plane and luckily we have that and we can just pick it out by name and here specify that as grid one. Click OK and that's going to ask us uh, where is this roof hosted. It's going to assume that the roof is going to be at level two but of course this being an A-frame house the roof starts from the actual bottom level uh, and that is level number one. So just set that up like that, click OK and there we go. Uh, now moving forward let's uh, click here at one uh, point and then I'm going to go up at a 60 degree angle and let's go up at something like now yeah, let's go like that I think this is kind of high enough then we can go back down again at a 60 degree angle and we're pretty much done hit the escape key a couple of times hit finish and there we go we have our roof now one really annoying thing especially when it comes to these a-frame houses and steep roofs is that this point of the roof here it looks like kind of it's uh, it looks like it's kind of poking the ground uh, or level one and I don't want that so I can easily turn that off simply by going here into the properties for that roof and just changing the rafter cut to plumb hit apply and there we go looks much much better uh, I can of course go into level one just to see what they have and I just want to extend it here and then set it up like this let's give it perhaps an extrusion end of 1.6 
there we go. And I'm going to select this grid line and go to copy, select multiple, and then I'm just going to copy it at each five meters, for example, just like that, hit the escape key a couple of times, and then let's pull this in a little bit, just like that. I think this is I think this is fairly good. Uh, okay, so once we have the uh, kind of the, the roof created, we can go to the 3D view. This is what that looks like. And the graphics are really nice because I'm using that template, as I said, which kind of comes in with custom graphics already set up. Okay, moving forward, let's go back to the south elevation. And now we have to figure out the construction for this A-frame roof. And that's going to be a set of uh, beams. So for that set of beams, what I'm going to do is go here to the structure tab go to the beam tool uh, or structural framing, select that. And again, we have to figure out a work plane. And for the work plane, again, I can use one of those grid lines. And let's start off with grid line number one and then click OK. Uh, now for the beam type, uh, because I'm using again that template, I already have all of the beams loaded in. Now, if you don't have the beams loaded in, if you're using a your regular template, just go here to load family and load in some wooden framing. Uh, moving forward, let's then go and find the timber and I'm just going to choose this type. I think this is what's going to work for this particular house. I'm going to start off here at the bottom end point. Now, even though this is snapping here, you want to make sure that the 3D snapping is turned off. You don't want 3D snapping. So let's go from here all the way up to the top. And it's going to look kind of odd, kind of like it's just a simple line. So make sure to go down here to the detail level and change it from coarse into the fine level of detail. And now as you can see, you can see the whole beam. Then you want to go down and I'm actually going to go past the bottom of this house, just like this, for example, again, following that 60 degree angle, but just going past that down. And then I can go from this top point up at another 60 degree angle here. And finally, I'm just going to connect all of this like that using another beam at the bottom. Hit the escape key a couple of times, and then let's go to the 3D view. And we have something that looks like this. So uh, as I've shown you in that image, uh, we want to have a, a kind of terrace, and that's going to be kind of uh, held down anchored here in the terrain and then this is going to be holding that terrace in place. Uh, now make sure just to select the framing so let's orbit like this select that framing go back into level one and here we want to copy that and I'm just going to go here to the copy tool CO is the shortcut uh, copy, it, uh, copy it multiple times and then go from this endpoint to here to here and there we go hit the escape key a couple of times go back to the 3d view and this is what we have looks really really good uh, finally let's add a floor here so I'm going to go down to level one uh, I'm going to go to architecture uh, go to floor and let's use the generic 150 with a rectangle tool tool to place it and let's place it just like this so you want to kind of overshoot the house go to the align tool and then you can align it here just like that and then you can align it to this edge here now if you're Finding it hard to pick the actual edge, you can use the tab key to find at least one point, and then you can just kind of align this to that point. So just use the tab key for that. And now if I just hit finish, it's going to look like this, and I'm quite happy with the way that turned out. Uh, now moving forward, I actually want to add an additional level here in the house, so an additional floor. Uh, for that, uh, we can go to the south elevation, and here, because that level is going to be at level two, uh, we want to use that level two in order to mark out where that level should go. So what I like to do is go to the grid line tool and then create a vertical level just like this. Uh, we can rename it. So instead of being four, let's rename it into A. And then let's set it up here somewhere. So I want to mark out this point here in the, in the roof. This is the roof because I want that wall to be kind of, uh, or floor to be anchored inside of this roof construction. So we can move this a little bit towards the outside again. There we go. And we can now select this, uh, go to the mirror tool with the draw access function. The M is the shortcut and just draw a vertical line like this. And now you get a second one here, a second grid line. Now, once we have that in place, this is perfect. Now we can just go to level two, just double click here on that level two icon, 
zoom in as you can see we can use these as sort of a marker and then also let's change this to fine level of detail and that's going to show us the beams which I want to I want to see okay now we can go to the floor tool use the same generic 150 with the rectangle option and then I'm not going to go here to the intersection but a little bit towards the outside here and then towards the outside of that beam here and this place isn't going to have the roof okay hit the escape key a couple of times and now you want to zoom in here and then use the align tool to basically move that floor up to let's move it up to that point there just like this perfect and then here I can leave it like this hanging a bit in the air perfect and then if I go to the 3d view that will look like this and of course you want to join these together so make sure to go to the join tool select the uh, the floor, the roof, and now as you can see they're kind of joined in and that's exactly what you want to have. Uh, finally let's make some openings here uh, because I want this whole house to kind of open up towards this balcony. Uh, so what I'm going to do for that is simply uh, go to the uh, go to the same uh, south elevation like this, zoom in a little bit, uh, go here to the roof tool and expand that and go to roof by extrusion uh, again, let's go to level 1, click OK, and then here I'm just going to perhaps find the middle of this and then follow the same line of this roof. And you want to move this up just a little bit, so just move it a little bit off the ground. That's something that I suggest you do. And then in the properties here, instead of this being a roof, change it to sloped glazing and then hit finish. So now, as you can see, we have a sloped glazing inside of this, uh, in, inside of this uh, roof. So let's go into edit profile. I, as you can see, it goes a little bit past this point, so I want to bring it up a bit more. Okay, let's bring it down now. So it's a little bit of fine tuning, especially when you're using sloped glazing like this. Okay, I'm fine with that. And now let's go to the 3D view and you can notice that that's over here now. So what you want to do is move to perhaps level one, adjust the position of this, perhaps like that. There we go. So once you're happy with the positioning of your uh, curtain glass, uh, what you want to do next is go to the 3D view and then you want to deselect everything, go to the architecture tab, then go to openings and go to by face. So we are going to be creating an opening by face on this face here and then you want to go and change this from visual style realistic to wireframe, use the pick lines and then just pick out the edges of this thing just like that hit the escape key a couple of times go to trim and extend and then trim this here and finally because I want another one here uh, let's just select the whole thing and then go to copy and we can copy it from this intersection to that intersection okay perfect extend it a little bit further perhaps just to make sure it makes that opening all the way through perfect uh, now we can just go back here into realistic there we go and this I don't want this to be just glass I want it to actually be uh, a curtain wall so make sure to go here into edit type uh, go to the grid one layout change that to maximum spacing we can have that at 1.2 and then for the grid two, uh, this will be maximum spacing at 2.4 and then we, we want to add the, the mullions. So just add this one here. And then what they like to do is just copy this. And then it's a lot easier to just paste this all the way down instead of having to search for it each time and open up the drop menu. Then you can hit apply and OK. And this is what we get. And then finally, let's go back into level one, select this thing, go to copy. And then you can just use the kind of grip like that. To copy this to the other side go to the 3d view and this is what we have and finally to kind of to finish everything off let's add a curtain panel on uh, the front as well as the back so let's go here into level one and you want to switch this to wireframe uh, here for this as well here you can see the bottom and then you want to go to wall here search for a storefront curtain wall and then you want to follow this line and go all the way to the other side and find that same exact line there hit the escape key a couple of times, select this wall, uh, go to the move tool 
and then just move it towards this edge here. Perfect. Once we have that, we can just use the mirror tool. So just find here the mirror tool with the back axis and just pick the uh, grid number two that's going to mirror to the other side. And once it's there, hit the escape key a couple of times. Let's go to the 3D view. You want to select both of these, hold the control key to select both, and then go to attach top base and select that roof. Uh, feel free to hit the delete elements and this is what we have. Uh, and finally, let's add some sort of railing here and we're going to add the terrain as well. So for railing, I'm just going to go here into level one, uh, go to the wall tool and let's use the perhaps the generic 100 millimeter wall, change the location line to finish face exterior and then perhaps just go like this all the way around. Perfect, hit the escape key a couple of times. And you want to select this whole chain of walls, make it maybe one meter tall. And then here you want to kind of edit that profile so it goes all the way to there. Remove constraints. Perfect, and let's try to join these together. So join tool. It's annoying to have this thick line here, but we're going to fix that a bit later. So let's go here and again, join these. Oops, remove constraints. There we go. And then again, we can try to join these together. Okay, so uh, if you get this ugly line, if you don't want that, you can go here to uh, then uh, to basically line work tool and then change this to let's try invisible lines there we go much nicer perfect so just a couple of invisible lines there hit the escape key a couple of times and this is what we have we can perhaps if we can join all of this up and then we can use those same invisible lines to get rid of these which would be perfect there we go much nicer. But anyways, this is kind of just fine tuning. But uh, anyways, let's add the terrain as well. So for the terrain, let's go here to the masking and site, uh, go to topo surface, and let's place some points. So I'm just going to go here to the site plan in order to place that topo surface. And what you want to do is just go there to place point elevation. I'm just going to set it a little bit below uh, so maybe point 0.1 and then let's go through the kind of the edge of the building here just like that perhaps one more over there uh, next let's set this up to something a bit higher like point 0.2 And then finally, let's go all the way up to perhaps one meter or I don't know, let's try two meters. And then finally, f uh, let's go with three. So I want to have like a, a nice little terrain there. Okay, let's go to the 3D view. Okay, this is looking nice already, uh, but it seems to be a bit higher than I was hoping. Yeah, actually I wanted for this bottom row actually did not, if I can only select these points, there we go. I actually wanted to go below. So let's, yeah, I think I have all the ones that I want, perhaps this one as well. And then let's try minus 0.1. There we go. That's what they want. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the site plan and then let's add a few more points. So place point, let's go with minus one. And then let's place those like that. And then finally, let's go with minus, I don't know, like four. And finally, minus 4.5. Like that. And if we just go to the 3D view. Yeah, that's exactly what they want to have. And let's just select this whole row like that and then move it just oops just move it a little bit towards the inside to have that whole part yeah like that perhaps 
and move this one towards the outside as well. And then we can actually move this one from minus two, maybe minus six. Yeah, much better. So there we go. Now we have a little house. Let's extend this towards the outside to lose that edge. There we go. This here as well. Perfect. Hit finish. And there we go. We have our cool little house with a balcony that's kind of on the edge and it's an A-frame house. I really like the way that this turned out. It looks really cool and I think it's a really nice exercise where we kind of test out how to create both the terrain, the, the, the whole roof, the roof framing, the terrace, the openings and so on. Of course, make sure to add the stairs and uh, and the door and you can just play around with this project and take it even further. But anyways, there we go. That's the whole uh, tutorial. I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope you have learned something new. If you're interested in that course that you've mentioned, you can find that on my website, BalkanArctic.com. There I have many courses for all uh, no levels of knowledge, both for beginner, intermediate, as well as advanced level users. So make sure to check it out. If you want my project files, like like this house that we have created that's available on my patreon page that's the second link in the description okay that's pretty much it make sure to subscribe like and share this video and i'll be back with another balkan arctic tutorial in a couple of days thank you for watching and have a nice day